You've got so many people se- settling for mediocrity when it comes to the wrestling product. Bro, what does that say for the rest of their lives? They're going to settle for a mediocre job. They're going to settle for a me- mediocre salary. They're going to settle for mediocre kids. Nah, bro, you've got to strive to be the absolute best you can be. So with with AEW, when, when head-to-head recently with uh, NXT, they, they had a scheduling change and moved their Wednesday Dynamite flagship show over to Tuesday. And uh, as, uh, a, as, as uh, NXT reached about eight and a half thousand, eight, eight and a half a thousand uh, viewers, you had uh, AEW that got about three, 329,000. Uh, that was the lowest AEW show ever. So, you know, of course, you get uh, the apologists, you get, you get the uh, the defend to the deathers that says, oh, well, you know, we didn't know about the scheduling change and, uh, you know, they were head to head with the next heat and we didn't know about the scheduling change. Vince Russo, what, what do you say about the uh, this very abysmal number? And what do you say about the constant defenders of people trying to justify how low this number is you know bro it's 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 no bro it's it's people settling for mediocrity i i mean that's that i i bro i i have no tolerance for that whatsoever i i mean chris you know i i and i know we see three bro listen we we we, we're christian men and i have a firm belief that all our great god did not create us to be mediocre Mm. he created all of us to do great things there was a plan there there was a there was a plan for all of us to do great things and that's the one thing that i've seen in the wrestling business bro i am telling you doctor for the last 20 25 years the settling for the mediocrity I that that to me is out of everything, bro. That is the busy, biggest disappointment to me. When that show ends on Monday, when that show ends on Friday, don't tell me Triple H is looking in the mirror saying, "You know what, man? I left it all out there. Hmm. That was the best show I could have possible." No, nobody's saying that, bro. None of them are saying that. I said that every Monday. Every Monday, I made sure this this is going to be the best effort. Whether you like it or not, you know, that's all subjective. Effort-wise, I'm putting it all out there. And that's what it is, bro. You've got so many people se- settling for mediocrity when it comes to the wrestling product. Bro, what does that say for the rest of their lives? They're going to settle for a mediocre job. They're going to settle for a mediocre salary. They're going to settle for mediocre kids. Nah, bro, you've got to strive to be the absolute best you can be. Yes, indeed. Well said. You think you know all the wrestling stories? There's more you haven't heard yet. Join us on Backstage Pass. EC3, uh, your thoughts on the AEW as someone who's now a booker a company booker uh what are some things just psychologically philosophically that can be changed just wholesale as far as just trying to revamp this uh this dying company when it comes to uh, both viewership and live attendance yeah first off well said by vince it was inspiring and i agree the mediocrity the complacency all that seeing it on so many levels it's dude it i get depressed when i see companies i'm affiliated with doing that like Mm -hmm. down in the dumps dark mat bad place when i see mediocrity is good and they're hailing mediocrity as being exceptional when it's not drives me nuts maybe i'm a psycho maybe i'm a quote sicko i'm a little bit of both but i do agree with that as far as like a number i do know like the apologetists making claim. Yes, it's on a different night. I do believe in like routine and consistency will definitely take a big 
notch out of any number. But uh, at the same time, the more you don't acknowledge there's a problem with a building audience and attendance and things like that, the longer it goes, the further away it is from being something salvageable where hundreds, maybe hundreds of people are employed and making living wages that you don't want to see that go away for the sake of them or the industry. As a quote booker, man, I mean, I'm booking a territory once every six weeks, so I don't have the daunting task of week to week TV. But what I do know works is that and I think it could be applied is scaling a lot of things back and reestablishing making people stars and attractions over good match, good match, good match, good match. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about it last week with a ricochet in a get over match that's 14 minutes long where somebody we don't know is kicking out of like his really cool false finish stuff we're like it's first off it can't get any worse can it so could you try something drastic something new something different mm-hmm. and just reestablishing people as megastars in your top tiers and then on the come up the young people that are you know striving with a lot of potential that get in the mix and then a solid mid card with experienced veterans guiding young talent with potential to be there or at the same time able to step in and be on top with the proper build and the proper story so i think the biggest thing i would do is sh- i would scale everything back and i do not think the people that are still there are going to turn it off if they see a six minute get over match for ricochet they're going to mm-hmm. be that was sweet and that was quick too cool what's next we're saving those big matches and big encounters for premium shows with build where you are invested for 15 to 20 minutes of two guys. You don't know who's going to win. They're exciting. It's hella cool, dare I say, trading big things back and forth. There's your this is awesome. There's cheer for everybody. There's your AEW chance. Making them mean something to earn those chants. And I think it'd be a very easy fix to scale back and reestablish. Redcon almost the entire thing. You know, Chris, it's funny because all the AEW faithful now are trying to shove all our faces into the uh, in, into the TV rights deal, uh, including Dave Meltzer. Oh, yeah. Bro, here, here, here's the bottom line. Chris, we have talked about this forever, and, and all three of us understand television. Bro, you've got streaming services. You still got cable. You still got network television. Content is king. Sure. Content is king. Everyone, bro, number one, everyone's looking for content. Number two, everyone is looking for cheap content. AEW are content creators, bro. They put out three shows. They, so yes, bro, that is going to be valuable to a streaming service or a network or cable. They need content. Yep. What does that have to do with the show sucking, bro? I mean, my God, you know, if the three of us now had our own production company and we were producing content, we would be getting $180 million too. Mm. Content is king. It's totally separate. I don't care about the deal, bro. These people need content. I care about the content being the drizzle and you know what. Yeah. Go ahead, Ace. Did they officially sign a deal? Has that been signed? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Good. Here's one thing, though, and like that's why this divisive tribal nonsense between wrestling fans is absurd. Like, not one person on this panel or any person that actually loves, wants, respects professional wrestling and how people put their bodies on the line and how they make their living feeding their families doing this. Not one person wanted, wants a place to fail and go away. Everybody wants it to succeed. So I don't like that argument. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, Vince, do you attest, how much do you attest to just poor PR marketing as far as just the promotion is concerned? Because as you were talking and as East was talking, uh, I was thinking of back in your day when you were a uh, head writer, there was the 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 uh, Westchester Kennel Club. There was a... Uh, uh, being forced to be shift over to th- Thursday, raw Thursday. That was, that was a thing. Uh, time 
Yeah, yeah, U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, there there was so many things that would cause Raw to not have that, you know, that primetime Monday spot that, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to promote the heck out of this because we want our we want our fan base to move with us as we're moving because of these uh, preemptions. What do you attest to such a huge, I mean, you had, you had about half the viewers. I mean, this is, this is, they had, a, I think they had about 660 the, uh, the, the uh, week before. You had half your viewers drop off in just one week's time. What do you attribute that to if it's not, or if it's including just a lack of, 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 of promotions, a very poor promotion within their PR and marketing I think, Chris, a lot of it still is must-see TV. Think about it, bro. bro if it's if it's if it's Attitude Era and it's nine o'clock on Monday, and all of a sudden the dogs come out and not not the, you're you're going ballistic. <laughs> you're going now now you're now you're on the internet. Whatever. Oh my God, where they moved the show? What did I miss? You, you know, here. You put it in, and it's not there, and no big deal. I'll just go watch something Man, else. People point. actually back then looked for it, bro, because they couldn't miss it. You don't have that same sense of urgency today. If you miss it, you miss it, bro. EC3 Vince Russo's cooking tonight, man. I think that that's a great point because I literally used to do that. Right. <laughs> back back in the 90s. Like, I used to- oh, I'll, I'll do that if my guy, I'm like, yeah, yeah, my favorite show is preempted. I will freak out. Major yeah. Dad, no. Yeah, I remember watching the TV Guy channel, and it, it would I would look, you know, and it would scroll up real slow, and it would, you know, I was looking for that Monday Night Raw slot, and it, and it wouldn't say. I'm like, well, wait a minute, what, what's yep. going on? Like, what, Absolutely, what's man. Going? Absolutely. Yeah. And Chris, Great and point. that, and that's the thing, bro. Here's the thing, bro. Even if that happens, Chris. You don't have to make excuses if you produce the best show you possibly can. Like yes. if that were me and I was on the receiving end of it and we didn't draw an audience, I wouldn't be sitting here making a million excuses as long as I knew I produced and wrote the best show I possibly could. That's that's all that would matter to me. They can't say that. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. East, you got anything on that? No, I was just thinking like the numbers – and one more thing I'd add to like what I would do, which I have no right to be saying, sort of my own opinion, is to not focus on the numbers. I think that like puts an immense amount of pressure to deliver a very slim margin of victory. So if next week it's back to 674, oh, they increase, like the, the week by week living off the numbers is gonna interfere with a creative process. And yeah. I think we, you're, you're chugging away and trying to get that little number to go just a little bit higher. You're missing, you're playing for pennies when you should be thinking about dollars. And it reminds me of like a guy in a bad relationship who this girl is like kind of like sick of him. And instead of giving her space or telling her to go, like instead of standing up or setting boundaries or finding respect, like it's the guy keeps buying me gifts. And then she's just getting more mad every time. Like, here's a, here's a bushel of flowers. Oh, God, stop. Oh, here's a, this. Oh, here's a diamond ring. Here's the, And then she's just, like, sick of it, so she's just going to go away forever. But if you kind of just play it cool and don't worry about it, guaranteed for men, too, they always come back. They always come back. Oh, I'm bothering you? Okay, see ya. Throw up a few casual Instagram stories where it looks like you're having fun. Psh- right away boom but then boys you let them marinate for a little bit longer maybe you leave them on red maybe you go a couple days oh hey sorry just getting this sup we got the red pill from uh ec3 coming on over this is exactly what ec3 is saying (laughs) and and he's 1000 percent right chris that's why here's all you can do bro know that you wrote the best show every week Sure. As long as you knew and you consistently do that week after week, you don't have to worry about the numbers every week and losing 10,000 and gazing five. If you write good, consistent television every week, it's going to grow. Yeah. It, and it might take a step or two back on that yeah. growth. You just have to yep. trust. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
is there is there like a um is, is there like a, a moral or just a a, a professional sh- stab or a jab just just psychologically if you see that half of your audience <laughs> then watch the the next week I, I like i like ec3 you you talk about the pennies the dollars analogy you know you know don't, don't continue to look at it every week to notice you know hey up 10 down seven up nine but you lost half of your audience within a week's time when does it get to the point where like you can't justify this at, the, at this point when, when is it when does it reach that threshold when somebody stands up and takes accountability for it which has to be the leader whether it's the mm-hmm. leader's fault or not mm-hmm. what leadership is taking accountability standing up not playing like what ifs and this and that admitting or openly saying maybe there's an issue and maybe we need to reevaluate some things and i'm not saying go on a firing spree or mismanage the office or whatever like that but i think the first thing is just acknowledging it because if i'm leading that and we're, we're taking this dip and my, my talent could feel oh my god we're not doing it people aren't watching us is it something I've done? And there's what, 80 to 175 people in that locker room so you guys are gonna have to manage where you don't want them projecting negativity or not coming in and doing their absolute best, like Vince would say, settling for mediocrity. No, no one's watching anyways. So you just have to step up, take it, and figure something out. Yeah. Chris, think about this. I believe in October, we're going on six years. I think AEW, oh, right? Five. It doesn't is it five? Is it five? Okay. Mm-hmm. Think about this, bro. Five years in October. We're in October now, right? Five years. Five, five years. years. In those five years, have you heard Tony Khan one time say this? One time in five years, we need to do better. Bro, no, we, I've we, heard the reverse. I've heard yeah. him mention Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. And, <laughs> and Bro, how many, how many head coaches after a loss do you hear say we've got to okay. do better? Yeah. How many? And bro, let's go back to uh, Triple H's comments the, with the uh, uh, African Americans. Hmm. If he would have answered that that way, there would have been no, you, you know, there would have been no issue. We yes, we've we've got to. What? Why is that so hard for people to say, bro? We've mm. got to do better. Right. It's, it's hard, Pride. I think, to admit failure, mm. but until you realize everybody fails at everything they ever try, at some point, like it's not a big deal. It's actually. Mm quite soothing it is it is bro 